What's, what's one story that changed your life? Hmm. I've experienced many, many meaningful moments and I've heard many very profound and powerful stories. I'll just tell you something that opened me up to a dimension that I haven't thought of earlier. I was once invited to do a Shabbaton a year ahead of time, which is not the Jewish way of doing things. You know, when the Pentagon invited me, they invited me two years before. And then I knew they weren't Jewish. <laughs> uh, you know, Jews invite usually, you know, right before. Somebody called me in California and he said, can you come tomorrow night to speak? I said, no, I'm booked. He says, but I already put up signs that you're coming. <laughs> That's great. So now it's my fault, you know. In any case, people are interesting. Mi chamcha Yisrael, right? He had so much betochen. I said, betochen in Hashem, not betochen that I'm coming to California tomorrow. <laughs> Anyway, so I got this invitation and I scheduled this Shabbaton and I even got my wife to come with me. We sent our children to our, my, my in-laws and my wife would come with me. We were really looking forward. We were about to leave the house. We packed up. And Friday afternoon, as I'm about to leave, I get a call from the organizer who tells me that the Shabbaton was canceled. Like Friday afternoon was canceled. You had hundreds of people coming. Politics. I'm like, politics? You found out about the politics six hours before the Shabbaton? You didn't know about the politics a year ago? Politics, it's ugly, it's disgusting. I'm like, how do you do this to all the people coming? How do you do this to me? I mean, it's just not menschlich. This person tells me, I'm embarrassed to be part of this organization, but it's canceled. I was really, really upset. Or to confess, I was furious. I was really furious for a few reasons. You know, we planned this and it was all worked out. I was also relying on the weekend financially, whatever. It was just a mess. I was so upset. I tell my wife, I say, Esti, this is really not nice. But it is what it is. It's canceled. So uh, I wasn't going to have her or me cook Shabbos. It was already Shabbos was soon. I invited myself out to a friend for, for the meal. And we went for the meal to this person. And we came home to our apartment. We were living in Brooklyn at the time on New York Avenue. But I have to tell you, I was really angry. And anyway, we come home. My wife goes to sleep, I go to the couch, <laughs> I'm reading, I'm learning, and uh, I thought I'll fall asleep, but I was not falling asleep, I was very anxious. So first I thought I was just anxious because I was upset, and I finally fell asleep on the couch, and three in the morning I woke up and my heart was pounding, and I didn't know why. I thought maybe something happened, I ran to, my, to our bedroom, my wife was sleeping, she was fine, something was bothering me, I didn't know what. Like, and I couldn't go back to sleep. This was in an apartment building, it's called the President Plaza, and I had an office on the fourth floor. We were living on the first, and there was light in the office, and I had more books there, and I wanted to check something up, so I thought I can't fall asleep anyway. It's three in the morning, I'll go up to the fourth floor. So I start walking up the steps Friday night, three in the morning, and when I come up to the floor where my office was, I see a teenager sitting on the steps, and it was a very strange phenomenon. He was sitting like with his head on his forehead, just sitting on the steps and contemplating. It wasn't something I expected. So I sat down near him and I said, good Shabbos, and he wouldn't answer. I said, good Shabbos, is everything all right? Do you need anything? Do you have a place to sleep? Can I do something for you? What's bothering you? No answer. After a few minutes, he says, leave me alone. I'm like, what happened? Share with me. I'm not your enemy. What's your name? Do you need a place? He stands up, and obviously he was using somebody's apartment there because the door was open, and he ran into that apartment. And you know, just my, my instinct told me, follow him. And I followed him, and he slammed the door, but I put my foot in. <laughs> so he slammed the door on my foot, but I got into the apartment. And as I walked in, he ran into the kitchen, and I saw his hand was filled with tablets and he put them in his mouth. And I knew what those tablets were. I saw the bottle and I knocked him. <laughs> I shoved his hand and most of them fell down and came out of his mouth and he started to wrestle me. <laughs> He's like, get out of my life. I'm trying to end my misery. What are you doing? Get out of here. And we literally started a wrestling match. Friday night, 3.30 in the morning. It was surreal. 
he was punching me and kicking me and fighting me and I'm fighting back thank God I was a little bigger and a little stronger so I managed to uh, triumph <laughs> to be victorious and I pinned him down and after an hour he relaxed and I'm like what's happening he says the pain was just too much I decided to end everything and you you ruined my plans you ruined my plans we spoke till 7 in the morning till 7 in the morning he opened up he shared his life story at 7 in the morning he, he was different he was a different person he was really highly intelligent and sensitive, brilliant person, and very deep, deep, deep. We spoke for hours. And anyway, it was seven o'clock, and I was giving a shear at eight before davening. So I brought him down to my apartment, and I woke up my wife, and I said, Esti, listen, I have a wonderful guest here. I'm going to give my shear. I'm going to daven with the early fast minion. I'll be home right away. I just need you to be with him for a few hours, and then I'll take over. And I went to shul, I did my shear, I cut it, I dove into the early minion pretty fast, and I came home right away, and uh, I spent Shabbos with him. Mitzvah Shabbos, he fell asleep. Mitzvah Shabbos, I set him up with somebody who I knew was a real expert for this type of trauma, and he really took him under his wings. And today he's, you know, an extraordinary, young, bright, successful person, uh, really a source of light and and honesty and authenticity and I remember Mitzay Shabbos, thank you Mitzay Shabbos, I turned to my wife and I said, Esti, do you realize if that Shabbaton wasn't cancelled he would have been dead and then I became aware of something they cancelled the Shabbaton because of politics but God cancelled the Shabbaton so that this boy should be saved and from that moment in my life, it taught me such a profound lesson. You know, things happen. Not always by my choice. You get involved in things, things happen, and sometimes there's politics, and sometimes it's not so nice, and sometimes it's a little filthy, and it's so easy to get entangled and to get upset and to keep grudges and to get frustrated. From that story, I learned so much that there is always another layer there's another dimension that we never ever know and I'm thankful today I look back and I'm thankful that they canceled the Shabbaton even though it was not pretty because this boy's life was saved and I had the privilege of being Hashem Shliach at 3.30 in the morning to literally save his life for me it really opened my eyes to always know that there is a deeper layer and you have to be open to that